formless, shapeless, like water. Now, if you put water into a cup, it becomes the cup. Now, water can flow or it can crash. Be water, my friend. Hey, what up? It is ELB on Cinco de Hangover, the 6th of May, a day after UFC on Fox 3. And it is a uh, tale of two cities, so to speak. They won the demos that they wanted to win. The problem is the uh, number of people is, is going the wrong direction. Now, these are only preliminary numbers. When the numbers come out on Monday or Tuesday and are a little bit more precise, you'll see the actual audience that tuned in. But needless to say, we're not really going in the right direction. Now, the lineup that they had last night for the casual fan or the average fan, however you want to call it, not all that great. The fights, however, totally different story. Now, when you watched LeVar Johnson in Strike Force, you thought, man, that guy can punch. When he comes in and he cracks granite chin Joey Beltran in the face and knocks him out cold, you go, wow, that dude can hit. And then when he steamrolls last night, Pat Barry, you go, holy cow, let's get him some real competition. Because let's be honest, Pat Barry is regressing as a fighter, and his philosophy of standing in front of him and, and doing that and weathering the storm in front of LeVar Johnson means that he really didn't have a great plan going into this one. And that's the fun part about picking these fights is, obviously, if I knew what his plan was going to be, as much as I like Pat Barry, I would have totally picked LeVar Johnson because he looked like a beast last night. And uh, I would like to see Mark Hunt or Shane Carwin next something bigger. Shane would probably be the best one, I would say, when he comes off that injury, because that would be a great fight to watch. Because LeVar, I hope he's as much of a beast as he seems right now, because that would make the heavyweight division just a tinge more fun. And uh, not that it needs to be more fun, but it's always fun when you got a dude lurking around that can drop bombs like that. Husamar Palhares, and of course, Alan Belcher. Alan, a uh, great, great fighter that all of us really love to see fight. And especially after coming back from that career-ending eye injury, knocks two wins in a row and we're all going, mmm, Husamar Palhares, really, really tough dude and he's going to rip your leg off. Probably don't want to go down there. Alan Belcher didn't want to go down there, but he ended up in that position. Husamar had the leg. Alan Belcher turns it around and tries to get him in a twister and was really close. What's even crazier is once they settle and they battle and battle and battle and they end up with Husamar in guard and Alan sitting on top of his guard. Alan didn't run, which is what I think most other people would have done in that situation. He stayed right in there and ended the fight brutally and violently. Brings us to our co-main event of the night. Johnny Hendricks taking on Josh Koscheck. Hendricks wins. He heads into the lion's den against GSP and Condit. Koscheck wins. He has two or three fights till we care about him again doing that sort of deal. Uh, didn't matter though because Big Rig walked away with the win. Controversial? I, I don't think so. Fight metric would show that uh, Johnny Hendricks was the busier and the more precise of the fighters. While when you get to significant strikes, it looks like it's pretty close. It still ended up being Hendricks on the winning end of that. And then he becomes the only other guy in the weight division, save for GSP, that has beaten both John Fitch and Josh Koscheck. That is a very interesting matchup. I would, however, like to see Hendricks mix it up a little bit. He was pretty um, reliant on that double left trying to knock out Koscheck, which he was never really able to uh, get going. Towards the second and third, he mixed it up quite a bit, but in that first round, it was a lot of that jab, double, double, trying to uh, hit the knockout, and that just wasn't it. He needs to vary that up a little bit if he's going to go against GSP, because GSP, or even Condit for that matter, I think will pick him apart if he's going to have that sort of predictable and repeatable game plan, I I'll say. In the main event, you have Nate Diaz taking on Jim Miller. We talked all week long about how we thought the wrestling was going to be a big, big deal. Uh, Nate Diaz has done a hell of a lot of training. He usually has some trouble with wrestlers. He had no trouble last night. In fact, he looked very, very scary. And even scarier when he finishes Jim Miller by about cutting Jim Miller's tongue off with that guillotine. Because that was uh, some slick jits and a, a crazy way to end the fight. Nate wants to take some time off, which is fine because I think all of us are thinking that Benson Henderson and Edgar will uh, do not only a second fight, but probably a third fight. So Diaz taking a vacation before he gets that title shot is probably going to work out for everybody. Jim Miller, kind of back to the drawing board. I mean, he didn't look all that great in his hometown. He lost to Benson Henderson, who now has the strap. He lost to Nate Diaz. And I, I think after all of that stuff, he's kind of lowered his stock tremendously. Not tremendously is probably harsh, but certainly has to rethink and get back on the winning streak and find some fights that he can actually capitalize on because he didn't look at any point, even throwing his biggest head kicks and shots to the head, 
He didn't really look like he was in there. Some great scrambles when they uh, got to the bottom, but in the end, he got choked out and nearly lost his tongue. So Nate Diaz looking like a beast um, and is a great addition to 155, if you couldn't tell that already. So whenever he gets the title shot, look out for him. We'll catch you this week. We got to break down a whole bunch of stuff that was also on the undercard because that was great for UFC on Fox 3. And we get you ready for UFC on Fuel as well as whatever the hell is going to happen on Memorial Day weekend when that card changes every 15 minutes. Talk to you next week. See ya.